Hey guys, so today's video is going to be exclusively on my pregnancy. Now since I waited a little bit longer to announce my pregnancy, I didn't do some of those updates along the way where if people announce it like 8 or 11 weeks that they might have shared. So today I'm going to go back and share a little bit of our trying to conceive story, how I found out I was pregnant, and a little bit about some of the do's and don'ts or suggestions for the first trimester and things that worked for me and how my experience was. Okay, so first of all, our trying to conceive story was I am not someone who gets pregnant easily and I have very irregular periods. And so it's kind of hard for me to know when I'm gonna get pregnant and that kind of thing. I've never been the kind of person who could just get off birth control and it's like, boom, I got pregnant. And when you have really, really irregular periods or you don't have a period every month or stuff like that, it can be hard to use like ovulation tests because they give you 10 tests and you're like, well, when should I test? When should I use these? Like, I don't even know. Like, and sometimes I felt like every day I was just getting a zero and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'm not ovulating. I don't know. It had been over a year last June that I got pregnant. And so I found out I was pregnant and I told my husband for Father's Day and we were really, really excited. And, you know, I was up at camp last summer and so you know, I was having all the pregnancy emotions and sickness and stuff up there. And then in late July, I actually lost the baby, ended up having surgery. Some of you know that I had surgery, but I didn't feel like at the time I really wanted to talk about it because it was very emotional for me, but I lost the baby at about 11 weeks. And so that was really, really hard. It was a really hard time. After trying for so long to get pregnant and then to lose it, I know some of you guys can understand, it's just devastating. So then after that, I was just kind of like, you know, you know, let's give it a few more months and see, and maybe this just isn't meant to be for us. Maybe we are just meant to have two children. And our 10 year anniversary was coming up in January and I was like, I really want to plan a trip, but I, I first was going to plan a cruise and I was like, oh, if I ended up being pregnant, being on a ship in a cruise would probably not be the best idea. So I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. And I was like, you know, cruises, you need to book a little farther in advance. So it's like, well, let's not do the cruise. You know, I'll wait in November. You know, my periods are usually like a month and a half to two months between. And so I was like, I'll wait until I have my period in the end of November. And then I'll book the trip because then by the first week in January, I won't be pregnant or anything yet. So <laughs> that's what we did. So I booked a trip to Disneyland and we were really excited. And I was just kind of like not thinking about it. And Honestly, I was feeling excited for our trip. We had another one planned for Disneyland in March. And I was like, yeah, let's just, let's just live our lives. You know, that's when I was doing Vlogmas. I moved my stuff downstairs. I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to plan for my life right now. Right now I have two kids. I have this extra bedroom. I might as well use it as a filming space. And I was really happy. Like I was okay. I just was like, this is what I'm going to do. Probably about three weeks before Christmas, we went to some outlet malls that are in Park City. And I went to the Express Outlet and I bought myself some new jeans. And so I bought these new jeans. I kind of put them away thinking, you know, I'm going to wrap them up, give them to myself for Christmas because I don't know if you're like me, but I buy myself things for Christmas and, uh, and I really needed them anyway. So it's just kind of an excuse to get them. So we went up to my husband's parents' house and they live like six hours away from us. And so we traveled up there. We brought all of our presents and they live in Montana. I didn't bring a lot of jeans because I knew that I was going to be getting some jeans and I brought those up with me for Christmas. So I remember I unwrapped the jeans and then, you know, oh, okay, great. I got my jeans. And then I remember going in the bathroom and putting them on like the next day after I'd showered and being like, um, these are tight. Like, did I buy the wrong size? And I was like, I know that I bought the right size. I just bought these like a month ago. Like how can these, not be fitting. I know I didn't gain weight. Like what the heck on and off the past week, I had been having a lot of like tenderness and I was just like, okay, um, something is going on. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'm ovulating right now. Cause that's a very common occurrence to be like bloated and to be, you know, having breast tenderness when you're ovulating. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm probably ovulating. That makes sense. Since it's been about a month and I have my periods like every couple of months or whatever. And so I didn't think that much of it, but then it just like didn't go away. It wasn't just like a day or something. And I was just like, okay, this is um, interesting. 
And so I talked to my husband, I'm like, do you think there's a chance I could be pregnant? And, I, and he's just like, I mean, I guess you could be, but like how, like it hasn't been that very, it hasn't been long enough. And I'm like, I know, right? And so I was just like, I don't know, but I kind of had that gut feeling like maybe I am, but it was just like, it doesn't make sense on the timeline. So his parents live far away from the town. So I wasn't able to just to a store. The New York store was like an hour and a half away. Like literally, they live in the middle of nowhere. So when we went home after we'd been up there for like, you know, Christmas and after Christmas and all that stuff, we stopped at a Safeway and I got a pregnancy test and I literally took it in the Safeway bathroom and it was positive. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm pregnant. <laughs> like, how is this even possible? So I remember I came out and I was just like kind of smiling and stuff. And then he said, what was it? And I said, it was positive. He said, as soon as I saw you walk out, I knew. He's like, I just saw how you were looking and how you were ran over here and I knew it was positive. So of course we were really thrilled. And I just thought, wow, like this really must have been meant to be because you know, we planned this trip for our anniversary so I wouldn't be pregnant. And I was like, at first I was like, oh man, you know, should we reschedule the trip? What should we do? But I was like, you know, there's tons of stuff you can do in California and Disneyland and be pregnant. And we had the most wonderful, amazing time. And it was awesome because it was kind of like a little bit of a baby moon, you know, like, hey, this is our last time to like go on this wonderful trip and be together before we have our next baby. And it was just really kind of like a celebration. So it ended up being awesome. So when I went in for my first appointment, you know, she was checking out the due date. And usually every time I give them the date of my last period and they think I'm like way farther along than I am because my periods are so long. And when she went in to do the first ultrasound, she's like, oh, it's right on date, like 28 day cycle. And I'm like, uh, I don't remember the last time I had a 28 day cycle like that. like never happens which when you're not trying to get pregnant it's fabulous but when you are it's not fabulous because you get like half as many tries so for some reason you know just a little miracle that's just the way it happened that i got pregnant and it was perfectly on with my due date before i went in i assumed i'd be due sometime in september and i was actually due the end of august so that's how I found out and from then I just started to get progressively like sicker and you know I get really bad nausea and I've already kind of discussed that so anyway morning sickness is horrible what can I say so my first thing was I had a lot of food aversions like when I'm pregnant I don't care for chocolate and it's like I eat chocolate and I think it tastes good but I'm not like oh craving chocolate like I want to eat chocolate really didn't feel like eating anything like I ate the most bland diet like oatmeal cereal crackers bread soups like things that I would say would go down easy come up easy <laughs> like and it was really hard and I think I had a lot of tiredness because I just wasn't getting a whole well-balanced meal because I just the thought of eating like really healthy and fruits and vegetables was just hard because I was just always worried about being sick. So the days that I was feeling good, I obviously like to eat out. That was like, if you have the money to do it and you like have someplace healthy that you like to go and you can get good meals, I recommend that because sometimes after you cook a dinner, you like have been smelling it, you're like, I don't even wanna eat this. And you're just really tired and you don't wanna clean up and all that kind of stuff. So my saving grace was Zupa's. I loved because I could go there and I could get a salad and it would be healthy and I felt like I was eating something that was good for me, but I didn't have to prepare it and I didn't have to go through the work of cleaning it up. It was close to my house, so that's what worked out really good for me. Usually every day around three o'clock I would get hungry and I need a snack so sometimes I'd go pick up my kids from school and then run through a drive through and just grab something a snack even if it was like french fries because I'm like I just need something to eat I don't care if it's not healthy right now like I just felt like I always need to have a snack crackers granola bars fruit something with me to kind of make sure I always had something in my stomach because if I didn't eat at three o'clock then around four o'clock I was sick and then by the time dinner came at five it was like I can't even think about eating so it kind of became a vicious cycle so eating continually made all the difference for me now I have some pregnancy essentials that will help you survive your first trimester first of all is always having a snack like I just mentioned make sure wherever you go you have a snack with you the next thing I'd recommend are these are the anti-nausea um, ginger gum these are made from the company C band and these were a lifesaver if I was out somewhere and I just started feeling nauseous I could take one or two of these and they just had that natural ginger in there and it would just help calm my stomach and I feel like this worked better for me than ginger ale because ginger ale with the bubbles would just kind of upset my stomach almost I know it's supposed to be calming but for me it was like the opposite it 
during this pregnancy I just couldn't do bubbly drinks so this was awesome and it worked really well also C van makes like actual wristbands and I don't know where mine are at the moment or I'd show you but there's actually like a pressure point that's like right here and you take your band and you put them on both wrists and it presses on those pressure points and it just helps take the edge off so if you are just like so sick that you can like get up and actually start to function and things like that and um, the next thing is like a lot of times you get a lot of un yucky things in pregnancy like bloating heartburn constipation you know with the nausea so just make sure you talk to your midwife or your doctor and get medicines that she or he says are safe to take so i'm not going to talk about what medicines i took or didn't take because i'm not a doctor so i'm not going to tell you what to take but that was a lifesaver for me was finding the right things whether it was over the counter or prescription to ease as many of those things as possible so i was feeling as good as I could feel. So if you're suffering, realize that there's stuff you can do. I know some people that are like, I didn't know if there's anything I could take for heartburn. I've been suffering. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> there's stuff you can take for heartburn. So make sure you talk to your healthcare professional and get some help if you are having any of those kind of struggles. Next thing I would say is get yourself a good waterproof mascara. I don't know why it took me so long to get a waterproof mascara, but every time I was feeling sick and then it's like, ugh, cry face all the way down and I'm like wiping off the makeup, not wearing makeup, just giving up. Once I got a good waterproof mascara, I was like, wow, I can actually feel like a normal person and put makeup on and I don't completely ruin my face if I get sick. So definitely recommend that. Next is if you are going to be working and you're going to be out of the house, I would suggest bringing a toothbrush and toothpaste with you because you never know when you're going to feel sick and there's nothing worse than being sick and then having to go back to work and just like having that yucky feeling in your mouth. So I would really recommend bringing something travel size with you or just pack it or just leave it in your desk or whatever it makes all the difference. I also personally always like to bring a change of clothes. When you're pregnant, you just don't know what can happen. Like anything can happen. You could be driving and get sick and throw up on yourself. Or if you're um, someone that's had children before, you may experience that your bladder doesn't work as good as it used to. And so all I'm gonna say is having a change of clothes is always a good idea. So if you're gonna be out and about or if you're working, I would always recommend that. Just, I mean, you can never be too safe and sorry. I mean, that also goes in the last trimester because you could be like, you know water breaking and stuff like that so just just have some clothes you know just just make sure you have some backups and if possible schedule yourself time to rest and take a nap naps were seriously a lifesaver for me i just really needed time to rest and your body is working so hard growing this tiny baby and you know you want to make sure you get your nutrients in you want to make sure you're taking your prenatal vitamins but it also needs rest so make sure you're getting to sleep and i just took as many naps as physically possible and at the time I felt badly about it but now I'm like no I, I do not regret that like that was a good decision because it made me feel so much better another thing I would say is if you find yourself dealing with a lot of anxiety or a lot of sadness or depression is that sometimes the hardest thing to do is just starting something like the thought of getting up is harder than it actually is. The thought of going to work is harder than it actually is. And once you get out of the house and actually start doing something or get up, most of the time you'll feel a little bit better. And when I talked to my doctor about how I was feeling, she just said, Amber, I know it feels like the last thing you want to do is exercise, but if you can just get up and walk around the block, if you can just walk around your house, if you can do something to get your body moving, you will feel better. And for me, it was winter, so it was hard to get sunshine, but just the days of the sunshine and go out there and just get, get a little bit of sun, get a little bit of fresh air, it will help you immensely because those months are so rough and so hard. And it's even more difficult because it feels like nobody knows what you're going through. Like you're just expected to like go through your daily life and do all these things and be a normal person. And inside you're like, ah, help me, I'm not a normal person. By the time I got to my second trimester, I was feeling much better. And I will do another video on second trimester and my current update, because that's where I am now in a few weeks. That's kind of my suggestions on how to survive your first trimester and how it was for me and it's always good to have a support group and people you can talk to. I also would suggest from getting a little journal, maybe writing down your thoughts. So if you are feeling sad or down, or maybe you're just not feeling good, just writing something that makes you happy, writing how you feel, just some way to express yourself, I think really, really helps. It's one of those hard times that when you're going through it, you're just like, I never want to do this again. I don't ever, why am I having a child? What, what am I, 
what am I doing? But once you get through that really hard first trimester, you're like, oh, okay, I can do this. I can survive. I can breathe again. So anyway, that's kind of my update for now, a back update, I guess. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed kind of hearing what my experience was like and my story. And if you're currently pregnant or you're planning on becoming pregnant, maybe this will help you know what to expect. Of course, every pregnancy is so different. And some people say that in their first trimester or their pregnancy, they felt best they ever did in their whole life. And they never throw up and they never get sick. And, and honestly, if that is you, then that is awesome. So that's just my experience. And if you are like me, then those are things that I would suggest. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye! You know all these YouTubers are doing these dramatic tutorials, and they're like going home and doing the whole stuff. It's just, it's just what real life is. I mean, they're not like, I mean, I guess that they're doing like get ready with me for the club, and then they're like going to the club right after. But like, let's be real, you know. We be in our yoga pants and chilling in our houses, Netflixing. <laughs>